Today I'm going to share with you how we power our caravan. Solar power, 12 volt power, 240 volt power, all these things were things that we had no idea about when we got into caravanning. It's something we've had to learn. Now, almost three months on the road, I like to think we're pretty much experts. We're going to show you our complete Red Arc solar setup. Let's take a look. I have out here one of our favorite pieces of solar kit, and this is a Red Arc 190 watt uh, solar blanket. Now, when it comes to solar panels, there's three different types. There's monocrystalline, there is polycrystalline, and there's another thing called amorphous panels. If you think about mono and poly, there's decades old arguments on which is better. To be honest, some are better in some applications, others aren't, and it's really an opinion thing like clockwise or anti-clockwise around Australia. This blanket outperforms most other larger uh, mono and poly solar panels. And the reason for that is the technology held within these cells. Even under low light conditions, even when the panel's quite hot, this bad boy brings in a lot of power. So solar panels is where all the power for your caravan or your car starts. And generally, we like to put this out on the front of our car and point the car at where the sun is at any given time. In this case, we've got east to west coming across so we can get sun all the time onto our solar panels. I'm going to show you another solar panel we've got up on the roof just to show you the difference. Let's have a look. So up here, I've got a 150 watt monocrystalline panel. Now, this panel is fixed to the roof of the car. Unlike our solar blanket, which we can move around depending on where we need to capture the sun, this is always fixed. But at 150 watts, this runs the fridge inside the car very, very comfortably. The solar panels, basically take the, the light from the sun and convert that into electricity. How do we get that electricity into the outlets in the caravan? Let's go take a look. So back to our solar blanket, I'm going to show you how we get power from the sun that gets into the caravan's batteries and then out into the outlets. So this solar blanket actually uses an Anderson plug and Red Arc always use the Anderson type plugs. It's a patented device. Don't get the cheap ones. Your connections are everything. So we've actually got an Anderson to Anderson connection here. And then if we follow this cable along, you're going to see over here where this Anderson plug plugs into the caravan. And the next stop for this is a solar regulator. Let's have a look at our Red Arc solar regulator and explain what it does. From this, we need to look under the bed, which is the heart of our solar system. Okay, let's have a look. So that Anderson plug that you saw outside the caravan actually comes in here to our solar input on our Red Arc solar regulator. This is a 30 amp solar regulator. So it comes in and then goes out to the batteries, which you can see lined up along here, which store our energy. Let me explain what the regulator's job is. Now, this little guy's job is to make sure that these batteries don't overcharge. Think of it like a bouncer at the nightclub it basically says, mate, you've had enough, go home, as opposed to letting everyone into the nightclub at the end of the night. Once these batteries are full, it's going to shut off and stop charging the batteries, which is very dangerous, overcharging batteries. So you absolutely have to have a solar regulator. Once the batteries take all the charge, they're ready to go. And from here, you're able to get power into all the 12 volt outlets within your van. It'll go through a fuse bank first, however, just like this one, to make sure that your sockets don't overload and to prevent any dangers that may lurk in overloading a socket. So look out for one of these as well in your van. If you've seen our inside tour video, you would have seen our charge station, which is where we charge our laptops, all of our devices inside the caravan. And yes, we also have a Google Home Mini. But the power from the batteries are actually wired through the van to our outlets. And if I open this up in here, you can actually see we've got two different types of outlets within the van. We have our sac socket type of connection, which is our 12 volt socket type. So these are these type of connections, which plug in into there to get us power straight from the batteries. And then we have our USB 12 volt type. So these are set to, um, to be able to take that USB type power socket and that plugs in and gives us 12 volt as well. So here in our station, we've got multiple options to charge our devices and things right off the batteries. You might have seen our 240 volt socket and wondered, well, how come that doesn't work? The reason for that is it's 240 volts and our batteries, as you can see down here, are only 12 volt batteries. So we need to be able to convert the 12 volt energy into the 240 volt energy over here. 
To do that, you need an inverter. And that's what we've got down here. So this is our Red Arc Pure Sine Wave 3000 Watt Inverter. Now, this is perhaps a little bit too big for a lot of people's needs. The reason why we have such a big one is we have a Thermomix on board. I'm not sure why, we just do. Um, and when the sun's out, it's bread making and Thermomix time because we're able to convert that 12 volt energy through the inverter to that 240 volt socket and then use all the appliances we need that we'd normally use in a home on a 240 volt socket. Now, a couple of things to be aware of, converting from 12 volts to 240 volts, it's gonna use a lot more power than a 12 volt type application or device. So the inverter spins it up and creates and replicates the same pure waves that your 240 volt socket would have at home. So as soon as we have this plugged in and we turn it on, which is a little button we have over here at our charge station, so if you look over here, you can see our inverter remote control. So we don't have to get under the bed to turn on the inverter. We can just push a button and charge all the 240 volt outlets with power. So with the push of a button, we're able to turn on our inverter, which then powers all the 240 volt sockets around the caravan. It does a great job mimicking a traditional 240 volt power supply here in our caravan as we travel around. But the other thing we've done here is we've actually made live all the sockets within the caravan. So safety is pretty important. I'm going to show you how we can actually separate 240 mains power from a caravan park with our 240 volt inverter so it's done safely and correctly. I'm just going to turn that off and I'll have a look. So in here we have our safety switch and we have our connection selection. So when we're at a caravan park and we want to use AC mains, we're able to switch down to use the AC mains in the caravan park. That's the plug we have outside the caravan that allows us to plug traditional 240 volt into our caravan. But when we're on the road and we don't have that plug, we switch it up to our inverter. And our inverter setting then means that when we push that button, 240 volt inverter is then supp supplying power through all those sockets. If you didn't have something like this, first of all, it wouldn't be legal. Secondary, um, it's a big problem because if you had it set to inverter and you got 240 volt, you plug in 240 volt, all of a sudden you've got a 480 volt situation and that's not good. Um, that's, a, that's a disaster waiting to happen. So getting this stuff put in properly, don't muck around with it, is well worth it to get the right things running inside your caravan safely. So that's power in our caravan on the road. We're able to take the sun's rays through the solar panels, into our solar regulator, into our batteries, into the 12 volt sockets, and then using our inverter, power all the 240 volt sockets. It's pretty simple once you get your head around it, but when we started out, it was really complex, so we hope this helps.